CataractCoach.com, removing the cortex before the nucleus. Yeah, using the phaco probe to remove the cortex before you start removing that nucleus. It sounds crazy, I know. So this is called primary cortical aspiration. Great idea from our young surgeon here, Dr. Renato Fernandez from Brazil. Now, starting off with a nice-looking capsule rexus, and that's going to go very smoothly. In a case like this, yeah, there's going to be a lot of cortex because it's not a very dense nucleus. Let me tell you, in the meantime, about retinarounds.com, our new retina sister channel. You're going to love it. So much great material. Remember, youtube.com slash at retinarounds and also retinarounds.com. Check it out. Now, back to the case here. Let's see the hydro dissection. You can try some cortical cleaving if you want, tending up that lens capsule as you have the fluid go across. That helps to separate. Remember, you want to separate the capsule from the cortex, not just the cortex from the nucleus. So now injecting some more, looks like viscoelastic in there, protect that cornea, and let's see the technique here. So this technique is called primary cortical aspiration. So doing the cortical aspiration first, and let's see how we're going to accomplish this. Now, I've never done this, but I'm interested to learn. Looks like a pretty novel technique. So now going in, let's see, right up against the rexus, Removing cortex with the phaco probe right up against the rexus. Obviously, don't damage the rexus here. Even go underneath the rexus a little bit. And let's see, rotate this around. There we go. And then aspirate, aspirate, aspirate. And the question is, is this going to strip it all the way back? Or is it going to strip it just to the equator or maybe just around the equator? Maybe that's enough. Maybe if you strip the cortex up around the equator, then you won't have anything left. We'll just find out. So here comes... A nice chop down the middle, beautifully done. And now another chop in the quadrants. Very adept technique here, I like it. And you're waiting like me, I wanna see when you're moving the nucleus, what's gonna be left in the bag? So bringing that one quadrant up, I like that technique, they're just bringing it up, get it out of the bag. Once you get that first piece up, the others come out a lot easier. And then there you go, bring that second quadrant up. Now again, not a very dense nucleus, but hey, I'm from Beverly Hills, I'm used to these. And now going behind here, Let's see, removing this last bit of lens material. You don't need to chop anymore. I think you just aspirate it down. Yeah, there he is. Use, I like the use of the chopper, not only chop, but also as a second instrument to like manipulate the fragments. Bring the quadrants up into the anterior chamber is nice, or pupil plane. Now, again, removing this, you had a big epinuclear shell. Now, what are we going to do? Grab that epinuclear shell. There it is. Get it flipped over. You know, that's my favorite technique for an epinuclear shell is flip it over. And once that thing's flipped over, it's a lot easier to move. There you go. Nice, good flip here. And aspirate that down. And look at that. The bag's empty. You got all the cortex out. That is pretty slick. That's really very interesting. So primary cortical aspiration. Now, a lot of the surgeons who are doing very high volume, like perhaps you're working in the public health system, you need to do 100 cataracts in a day. You're always looking for little things to make it a little more efficient here. So there's a tiny bit of lens cortex there on the, the, to the right of the main incision. But I think you can get that out after you put the IOL in. So here comes some viscoelastic to fill up the capsule bag. And so, yeah, always looking to make the surgery more efficient so you can help more patients. Like it's not about speed. It's about efficiency. And if you've done less than 500 cases, don't even worry about that. Just worry about being safe. Now, here comes the lens going in the capsule bag. You can also, as you saw from an earlier video this week, rotate that lens around. That can help you kind of clean up any residual stuff in the capsule bag. But, oh, this is a big hydrophobic acrylic lens for haptics. This is going to be a lot tougher to rotate. But that goes in the eye. Look at that beautiful rexus, by the way. And now let's take out the viscoelastic. But also remember that one little bit of cortex. I just kind of aimed the eye probe port to that area where that cortex was just to make sure we get it out. I don't want to leave anything behind here. There you go. There's that little last bit of cortex. Again, a little residual cortex will cause some inflammation in the post-op period, but fortunately, the cortex tends to resolve pretty easily. Here's going behind the optic to remove viscoelastic. That's a good maneuver. Nice technique with the second hand. I like how this surgeon uses both hands at every step of the procedure. Really makes a whole lot of sense. Now, when you see a one-handed surgeon from the old years, from yesteryear, makes you wonder, like, really? You did the whole thing with just one hand? You got two hands. It's like me trying to cut a steak with one hand. I'd rather use two. So we had cleaned up here at the end. What do you think of this? Primary cortical aspiration. Do you think this would work well in your patient population in your hands? Do you want to try this? Try to remove the cortex with the phaco probe before removing the nucleus. I think it's interesting. I'm going to have to try it. That's a very interesting technique. Please leave a comment below. We want to learn together here. Have you ever heard of something like this? 
I think it's kind of brilliant. All righty, and the case here looks beautiful, beautifully done. Thank you again for sending the video in. You too can send in your video. Again, cataractcoach.com. Click on the tab there. It says, Surgeon, send your video here. You can submit your video, full instructions, and let's feature a complication from you or a very interesting case just like this one. And check out retinarounds.com.